Hey guys, it's me. I just wanted to make a video really quick. I got requested to make a tutorial on how to make this cool little origami kind of pop out card. Um, this is it right here. And I basically, you can see it better. Um, it's a cool little card and all you have to do is um, when you open it, you just do this and it's like really awesome because it unfolds and it looks really cool and it's a lot of fun to make and it's very, very easy and I'm all about easy. I like things that are simple to make that don't take literally forever. Um, that's the ADD in me. I need everything to be quick because I'll lose interest in it if, if it's not. Um, but anyway, this is what I'm going to show you how to make, or a variety of this. It's not going to be this exact one. And I'm just going to show you the basics. I'm not going to show you how to decorate it because if you're crafty at all, or even if you're not crafty, I'm sure you can figure out how to, you know, decorate it, embellish it however you need it to be because maybe you're doing it. This is for a wedding for my a girlfriend of mine. Her sister's getting married, so she asked me to make a unique card. Um... But obviously, if you're doing it for a birthday present or an anniversary or Easter, which is today, Happy Easter, um, or something like that, you would decorate it accordingly. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do it. It's really simple. You need three sheets of six by six cardstock. So it can be you know any color any design any pattern you could do white and then embellish it later you know however you want to do it um, it's you know that's up to you I wouldn't use like copy paper because it's awfully thin and you're and you want it so that you're able to or so the person that receives it and you know and even before then you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the joints of this of each fold of the paper because this is where that paper comes in um, so you're going to want to make sure that it's a little bit of more of a heavyweight paper so that it, you know, any standard cardstock will be fine. Um, and then you're going to want two pieces of three and a half by three and a half two squares of three and a half by three and a half. Now for me, because this cardstock is a, and this is for the cover, this is for the, the back and front cover. Um, and because I like that to be a little bit more sturdy and this cardstock is a little bit, you know, it's not flimsy too much, but for me it is. So I'm going to glue two of these together. Um, and I'm just using you know, a, uh, a glue stick and I'm just going to glue two together so that it's a little more kind of thick and it'll give it a little bit more sturdiness if I do that, I believe. Because the first one I did, that wedding one, um, I used the white heavy stock, the heavy cardstock, the stuff that you buy and it's like kind of, you know, kind of really thick. And this one, for some reason, I thought it was going to be as thick, but it's not. I wish they would make more card colored cardstock that was, like, super thick. I don't know what I just did. Oops, I think I screwed that up. Woo! Oh, yeah. I grabbed the wrong one. Duh. That's okay. It'll dry clear. And plus I'm going to glue that on top of there. So it doesn't matter. It's going to get more glue. And if you're like me and didn't either cut your squares even or you glued it on there wrong. If you have any overhang, just clip it. It doesn't really matter that much. It's not going to show very much um, once you decorate it. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm just going to get a wipe so I can clean the glue off of here so I don't get it all over the place. Baby wipes. Best thing that ever happened to crafting. Yeah, I guess for kids too, but whatever. I don't like kids. Just kidding. I don't have kids. But <laughs> I always tell everybody I don't like kids, but I'm only kidding. Okay. Dry off. 
Okay. So, now that those are together and drying over here, each one of these pieces of paper you're going to fold exactly the same. So, it's wet. Um, you're going to fold it in half once. And you could score it if you want. I don't have my little score thing in front of me. And you're going to fold it the other way in half. So you're doing it this way, and then you're going to do it this way. So that the center has a T. I'm probably going to have to score it because you really want it, want it to be kind of... So it's going to have a cross in the center. Okay. And then you're going to fold it diagonally both ways. So you're going to fold it, well, you're going to try to make it even. Duh. Might help. Ugh. Dang it. A little bit more even than that. Mm. There we go. All right. And you're going to fold it diagonally that way and then diagonally this way it's very simple it's not like massive origami where you're like making a zillion folds and you have to really be careful um, you're just gonna basically fold it over once over twice diagonally once diagonally twice and you're done so you're gonna do that to each one of these and I'll go through and just do them real quick Fold it over in half once, fold it in half on the other side. I'm not doing the most neat and perfect job, that's okay. Mostly this is just for example. Give it a little score. you want the edges to be nice and crisp so that it will be easier to get it to start molding. Sorry about my phone making noise and the TV and, or the computer in the background making noise. <laughs> this is like the second video I've ever made so as far as YouTube goes and crafting. Okay, and this is the third one. This paper is not cooperating. Okay. Ooh. We have arthritis. It doesn't. It's never fun to sit here and fold paper for ever. Hurts your fingers. Okay. And one more. And once you have all of them folded, then at that point you'll just be assembling. And basically, how you're going to do it is, see the corner, how you can still see that there's like a square there? You're going to lay them out diagonally like this. Okay, and you're going to put one square on top of the first, on that square. So the corner of that sheet and the corner of that sheet this one will go on top of the first one and then this one will go on top of the third on top of the second one so basically it's you know one and then up on here and then up here is another so it's kind of they go up that's the easiest way I remember it is I put the first one down and the first then the second one on top and then the next one on top and it goes like that so at this point you're going to and this is the easiest way I found to do this don't put the glue stick here Put the glue stick on here and then put it down. The reason is this way you don't get the glue stick anywhere else and then when you're doing it, it sticks together. At least in theory, that seems to work. <laughs> so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to glue stick the heck out of this because you want it to stay really good because you don't want people to be opening it and closing it and saying, oh, how cool this is, and then bam, it falls apart. That would suck. 
or be funny, one of the two. Because they'd probably feel horrible and think they did it, and that would be kind of funny. Sorry, I like weird things. Uh, I like uncomfortable situations. It's kind of fun. Anyway, so there's the first one. And then we're going to smother this one. Who would have thought when we were kids and had glue sticks and used it for stupid things that we would be adults making these really pretty crafts still using glue sticks that little kids used? Not me. And also, when you put the squares on, okay, you don't want to, you want to make sure it's not covering the fold so that it can fold over. You want to do it like right, you know, right, right, right before the fold. You don't want to like overlap on the fold because then it won't fold easily and it'll kind of be like making a new fold and it might be weird. Um, okay, this is the part where I always forget <laughs> how to fold it and make it go. So let me look at this really quick. Okay, as long as that's in my lap and I'm looking at it, I can do it. Okay, so on these two panels are going to fold the same and this one's going to fold different. Now, when I learned how to do this from a YouTube video, there was only one YouTube video I learned this from. I didn't search extensively, but I did search a little bit and I couldn't find another one. And the girl that did it was, it was in Spanish, but I understood what she was doing because luckily she did it slow enough where I didn't need to hear her talking. I could just watch her do it. Um, but she didn't, ex obviously I couldn't hear her explain anything. Um, about the folding. I just kind of had to watch her do it. But it makes it easier if you think of it in, in two different types of folding. There's the folding on the outside and folding on the inside. The folding on the outside is very simple. You take these two triangles and you fold them like that. So that's all you got to worry about. Do that and do that on both of those triangles. Just fold them in like that. Okay, and then you do that on this one. You're going to fold it, you know, point it inward and point it inward. Okay, so, the, so, that, so it looks like that. Okay, so it goes, look, so it folds into the square. It's very simple. You just point these two inward and they fold onto themselves. Same with this one. Okay, now all that's left is this part which is the exact same thing except you're folding these out the opposite direction so you're folding these you are folding in with the folds on the inside this one you're folding with the fold on the outside like that and when you do that get it to cooperate. I think it's working. Why am I doing this wrong? <laughs> Hold on, wait. I have that right. I just got to make sure I got the other one right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. As this goes. Yeah, because this goes first. And then this. Okay, that's it. Sorry. Brain fart. Okay, so you got the first square, and then you got these two, which. They need to stay still. And then these two. You fold one under the other, so you could do it however you want. You could do it whichever side you want to start on. So you got that folded, so you could do this one and then this one. Because they all kind of, if you look in the back, it folds together. So it doesn't matter. It's just, once you get it done, it will pretty much keep its shape and very easy. And then you got the last one. So it's basically one, two, three. And now what I do after that, and I'll show you again in a second because I know I was like hesitant because I forgot for a second. I'm just trying to press it down so that it 
Okay. So once again, the first, the first one, the two fold into each other, and when they fold into each other, they basically meet in the middle. They meet in the middle, and then this one comes down to form a square. So that's what's happening here, except the square, there's one of the squares for this one is underneath it there. So basically it's coming together underneath. And then this last square does like the first one and folds on top. I hope that's making sense. If not, practice, you'll, you'll, I promise you'll get it very easily. So once that's all done, that's when you're going to glue your top and your bottom on. Now, you could choose, like I said, any color you want. You can make this, this paper for the outside a totally different color than the inside. You could do whatever you want. It's completely versatile that way. So, you're going to put your top and your bottom on, which I will do now. Which, again, glue stick is fine. I usually fold it up when I'm doing this so that it's in a square. Plus... Gluing it with the glue stick helps me put pressure on it even more. And then you're going to put the top on as best as you can because it, it's not the same size as this square. It's a little, it's a little bit bigger, so that it has a little bit of a lip. Um, so you just want to center it as best you can. I'm not about things that need to be absolutely 100% perfect, so if there's a project that needs absolute precise measurements, which this kind of does, but, you know, if you're, like, it doesn't have to be so precise that it's, like, scientific, and that's good for me because I'm not good at things like that. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. I mean, you want it to line up so it looks nice. Um, okay, so top and bottom are on. And sometimes I'll accidentally open it upside down, which will just do that, and you'll be like, what? So when you're doing your, your outside, make sure, because I've screwed this up once before, and please don't look at my ratchet hands, because they're nasty. Um, make sure when, before you decorate this front cover, you decide which way you're going to decorate it. Not this way, this way, like which, which, you know... Get your bearings on which way. Like, in other words, open it. Because you want it to open like this. So that it's nice and comfortable. And so that either... You could do it either one or two ways. You could decorate it this way. Or if you think that they're going to hold it like this. And then if you think they're going to open it like that. You can also decorate it that way. But I like decorating it this way. So that when they open it... Whoops, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> Wait, yeah, so that's what I mean. Make sure you got your orientation uh, right with how you're going to open it. So I like to decorate it with that being the right side. So that when it's opened, it goes voila. So now that this is all done, see how it kind of pops up? If you put this under something really heavy and, don't, and do this before you embellish it, because otherwise you're going to crush your embellishments, especially if you put flowers or, or like, charms or crystals on it you want it to get real flat you can either run it through your Sizzix or Big Shot you know run it through I mean not with so much pressure that you're like messing it up but just under the you know under the pressure where it just pushes a little bit of, puts a little bit of weight on it as it goes through and you can even let it sit under there let it sit under there for like two hours and it'll it'll like barely pop up when you have it open it'll always pop up a little bit without you know, like this one. Where did it go? What did I do with it? <laughs> oh, it's in my lap. Duh. Anyway, see like that one pops up slightly. And that's even got like a heavy metal piece on there. Heavy metal, yeah. Um, so, but it still pops up a little bit. And I had this thing under books. Under, I ran it under the Sizzix and everything. It's never going to be perfect. Um... So yeah, that's basically it. Now you can embellish it, and it's fun to just sit here and go like that, like you're playing the accordion. I don't know. I don't know whether this should be called the accordion card or the origami card. I don't know. But it's cool. I love it. It's fun to decorate. Oh, and as you can see on this one, hold on one second. 
Oh, never mind. Okay, so as you can see on this one, the inside, I forgot, totally forgot all about this, has these little scrapbook paper pieces that are all wedding, wedding like. And you notice how they're like triangles in the square. Well, if you want to decorate it this way, which looks really cool, um, I also put like stickers, but if you're going to put stickers, make sure you're not putting anything on the folds. So whatever you're putting in has to fit in the little triangles or on one of the flat squares, okay? Because when you fold it up, a couple of these squares in here stay without getting folded. Like this one, this one, this one, and this one, all the middle ones. They're, so they're not getting folded. So you can put, you know, a full you know full uh, square of things or put things right on the fold because those are, are not getting folded as you can see as it closes up you'll see more when you do it um, so if you want to do the little squares of scrapbook paper like I took a piece of scrapbook paper that's one sheet of wedding paper kind of it's got laces and stuff and I made sure that I scattered it differently so that none of the patterns were together just because I thought that was cute or you could do it however you want. You can, you know, decorate this, you know, however you see fit. But if you did want to do the triangles, the measurement for that and the best way to do this. Okay, here's the triangles. And I'm going to do this one for my girlfriend's birthday coming up. So I did a purple zebra print because she likes purple. Okay, so that's what you would do is you would just take the glue stick put it on the back of this don't put it on this because you might go over because these you don't want them to fit all the way you kind of want them to be you know like not all the way to the fold so I kind of put them in there with extra room around it um, and of course I'll put some stickers and stuff in there um, all you got to do rather than sitting here and cut out 8 million triangles actually you need 20 triangles um, rather than sitting here and cutting individual, measuring and cutting individual triangles, all you got to do is cut out squares that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and then take them and, I don't know, I'm hoping you could see this, and fold them diagonally, and then cut along the fold. If you just cut right along the fold line, kind of as a guide, I mean, you could just cut them corner to corner if you're, you know, a good cutist. <laughs> if you're a good cutist, that's my technical term for a person who uses scissors, a cutist. If you're a good cutist, then you could just do that, and that'll speed you through because you could do a couple of sheets at a time. Um, and then you just go through and you glue them in, and then you add your embellishments with not forgetting that you can't add anything you know where the folded squares are you can add big things I mean not too high because you want it to close properly but you can add stickers and a couple little gems and stuff like that to the middle squares so anyway that's it that's the origami card I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have fun hello um, and uh, click like if you enjoyed this video and um, if you want to see more you know, or comment and let me know if there was anything I left out or that you think should be added. And have a good holiday. Have a good um, Easter. <laughs>